John chapter 3. The closing verses of chapter 2 is very powerful. Verse 28 and verse 29. This is what it says. It says, And now, little children, abide in him. Abide in who? Yeah. In Jesus Christ. Abide in him. That when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his word coming. There is a word here that I want us to underline. Actually, it's a phrase. Abide in what? Him. Yeah. It's very important. Now, if by abiding in him, we'll be able to receive him with confidence, what will not abiding in him entail? It is always good that we use deductive reasoning as we study the word of God. It is very important. Yesterday on Facebook, somebody sent a statement, made a statement. He said this, he said, if you are working for somebody and it becomes like the person is always expecting you instead of appreciating you, you have to stop. So he stop for, he said, stop working for somebody who always expects you rather than what? Appreciate you. Now, it was put up there by a pastor. And so when most of you, perhaps some of us, who have stopped studying the word of God and don't know what the word of God says, we'll take it and we'll jump. And we'll say, oh, that's truth. I'm going to stop now doing all those things because I've not been appreciated. But that is not Bible. That is what motivational speakers use. But God's children, we don't use that. We listen to what Jesus Christ says. It says, do whatever we do, whatever work we do, whatever we do, we do as unto who? The Lord. The Lord. So we are not waiting for ex appreciation. Whether you appreciate us or not, we will say what? Do it. Because our reward comes from who? God. Now, so you see the reason why something has become, has become very, very critical too. Especially on Facebook, those statements they put up and so many of us on it. We, 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 we share it. You see, you share it. It is truth. It's not gospel truth. It's a lie. It is the motivational speech. And it is for the worldly people. But Christians, whatever we do, we do as unto the Lord. And whatever we are doing, we are doing as if the Lord is standing right by us, Amen. watching us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Standing by us, what? Watching us. So here he is, and now little children abide in him. When we abide in him, we will be able to meet him with great confidence when he does what appears. But if we don't abide in him, we shall not have the confidence to what? To meet him. We shall be trembling, afraid. Why? Because we are not abiding what? In him. Now, if he's writing this to say, he's writing to not unbelievers, but to who? Believers. Now, if he's writing this to believers, it shows to, it goes to show that it is possible to call yourself a Christian and not abide in Christ. Hello? It is possible for you and I to call ourselves Christians and not abide in Christ. How do I know that? Because Jesus said, on that day, many shall come and say, Lord, Lord, Lord. And I will say, away from me, I never knew you. They thought they were Christians. They thought they were apostles. They thought they were bishops. They thought they were second pastors. They were second bishops, square bishops, popes, and everything. But we come before God and he said, away from me, I never knew you. So that is the reason why it is important every one of us to make sure every day we wake up, am I abiding in him? Does he know me? That's the question. I say I know him, but does he know me? He sees us. He sees whatever we do. But does he know me as his child? As a person who is walking circumspectly with him? Does he know me? Because that is what is going to help you and I have confidence. Remember, I said so we shall have what? Confidence. 
we shall have what? Confidence. So on the day when Jesus Christ is going, is appearing, is appearing, some of us will have confidence and some of us will not have what? Confidence. So John is advising us and encouraging us to abide in him. And I love this John. John is one person who uses this word abide a lot. When you go to John chapter 15, it says, if you abide in him and his word abide in you, then you ask whatever you will and he will do it for you. And then it says, if we abide in him, we shall bear what? Fruits. Those who abide in Christ, they bear what? Fruit. You cannot abide in him and not bear fruits. I'm talking about the fruits of Christ. There are two types of fruits. There is the fruit of worldliness. And that is what those who don't abide in Christ bear. But those who abide in Christ, they bear the fruits of holiness, of righteousness, of purity, of love. The love is agape love, not erotic love. Not erotic love. I love, love, love with all the kisses that we do. That is erotic. And that will land us in the wrong place. So here he says, and now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So some of us are going to be ashamed before him. And I pray that not you and not me. If you know that he is righteous, watch verse 29. If you know that he is righteous, that is, if we know that Jesus Christ is righteous, if Jesus, we know that Jesus Christ is what? Righteous. Then it says, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. So how do you, do you know those who have been born again? Or who have been born of him? Are those who do what? Righteousness. And what is righteousness? Is it the righteousness that we have in America or in the world today, I have my right, I have my right, that is not righteousness. You just have your right. There are some people who also have their left, but that is not lefteousness or righteousness. There is a righteousness which is of God. It is full of holiness, yes. purity, truth. Yes. It is that which trembles at the word of what? Of God. And so all who do righteousness are born of God. So now he uses that to introduce us into chapter 3. First John chapter 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. What manner of love? In what form did that love come? John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only one, begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting what? Life. The love that God showed unto us and showed unto us is when he willingly sacrificed his only son. The purpose being for you and I to be delivered from the strongholds and the shackles of Lucifer. Amen. To set us free. Heretofore we have been aliens mm -hmm. to the kingdom of God yes. because of the sin that Adam committed. But God's love for us so much was compelled him to sacrifice his only son. So John is talking and says, what manner of love? The love that God has showered upon you and I, there is no word, there is no adjective, there is no word that can explain it enough. Nothing. No amount of money the world offers you and I can atone for the love that God has shown for us. Amen. That is why it is, it is incumbent on you and I 
to make sure that we are making the full use of this great sacrifice that God has made on your behalf and on my behalf. What kind of love? He said, behold, what manner of love the Father has showed, bestowed upon us. He has bestowed a love that cannot be explained away by any means. There is no way that can explain it. We can only say he died for us. But what was won for us in the spiritual realm cannot be explained away so cheaply. That is why the judgment day is going to be very, very serious. Hello? That is why the judgment day is going to be very what? And you know how crafty Satan is? Satan is so crafty that in these last days you hear that he has dulled. The church is not talking about the judgment day anymore. We don't hear that. Not in most churches. We don't. We are talking about money. And we are talking about deliverance. When they themselves who are offering you deliverance have been bound. They've been bound by covetousness, lust, pride, ego, and popularity. The book of Jude talks about it. It's a of asking to deliver, they themselves are bound. And they're like cloud without water. That's how Satan has put so many into sleeping. But because of the love that God showed by sacrifices in only son, the judgment day is going to be very, very fierce. Because on that day, you and I are not going to say, God, you are not just. Oh yeah, he's just. Because you know the number of years he allowed you and I to make our mind, whether we will serve him or not, so many of us. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Hello? Now are we what? The sons of God. If you and I have received Jesus Christ into our lives as our Lord and personal Savior, we are the sons of God. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. We are beneficiaries of God's beaucoup love. God's inexplainable love. God's measureless love. We are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be like. It doesn't yet appear what we shall be like. We don't know. It does not yet what appear. John was trying to peer. He was peering into the future to see how we're going to look like. He said, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. So you see, Pastor Pimple is over there fornicating. Hello? Committing adultery. Conventiousness, pride, ego, stubbornness, arrogance. And still says that when Jesus Christ appears, I will be like him. Come on, that's a lie. I will not be like him. Because I'm already manifesting the fruits of the devil. So I will not be like him. The people who will be like him are those who are already bearing the fruits of righteousness and of holiness in this life. Hello? It does not yet appear what we shall be like. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. And every man and woman, I will add, and every man and woman that has this hope in him, Purifies himself even as he's what? Pure. Now you see what I'm talking about. Every man and woman who has this hope of being like him when he appears begins to purify himself here even as Christ is what? Pure.
I cannot be committing adultery and say I'll be like him. I cannot be lying and be, say I'll be like what? Yeah. I cannot be having homosexual activities and say I'll be like him. So many pastors have been whipped into fear. They don't want to talk about this anymore. Who do you, would you, would you obey, God or man? But we so love our flesh, we love money, we love material things so much so, we have watered down. We will not say it because we are afraid. And not only that, Satan has been able to convince us into thinking that when you preach against him, you are judging Hello? Did you hear me? Yes. Satan has convinced so many of us into thinking and believing his lie. Yes. That when you preach against sin and you call sin by his name, you are what? Judging. Hallelujah. Yes. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. If you and I make it a habit of sinning, we are breaking God's law. Hello? <laughs> we are too quick to say God is the God of a second chance. And that lie Satan has put out there. That is why so many of us are living a licentious life. Style. We sin today, tomorrow, we say God is the God of the second chance. And we go back and say again, we keep on sinning and say the God of the second chance. We make it the habit of sinning. No, 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 no. That's not the God that I'm serving. He says that if we willfully sin, there no longer remain a sacrifice of sin, but a fearful prospect of judgment to those. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. Sin is a transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking of God's law, his word. God says, thou shalt not commit adultery. He has not canceled that. Those ten commandments are still binding. The only thing that has changed is that we don't wear it around our neck anymore. Jesus Christ came and died so he will live in your heart and in my heart so that he will give us the grace and the power to be able to obey the demands of the commandments. Hallelujah. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. Whosoever abides in him, hello, whosoever abides in him, Whosoever abides in him, whosoever abides in him, finish it for me. Sineth not. Sineth what? No. That is God's word, not me. I am just reading what God's word says. It says, every one of us that abide in him. So now you can appreciate the reason why John is saying, abide in him so that when he appears, we shall have the confidence to do what? Appear before him. Because he knows that if we sin, we'll be out of his will. And we shall have no confidence to approach him. Hello? You hear that? This is God's word. Not Pastor Pimpon's word. It is God's word. Not my way. It is God's way. And there is no other way that I can expound it to you. I may use the Greek word, but what is that to you? Are you Greek people? I can go and quote that I said this is what the Hebrews say. Are you Hebrews? No. You speak English. So let me speak in the English that has already what? Be a plain, as plain as that. Well, this is what the Greek, the Greek meaning, meaning how, what, how does it change what the word of God is saying? It doesn't change anything. It is the Holy Spirit who imparts it to your heart, not the Greek meaning and the Hebrew meaning. And you know that he was, now listen to whosoever commits sin breaks the law. And we know that he was manifested to take away our what? Sins. 
And in him is no what? In the Lord there is no what? Sin. In the Lord there is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever abides in him does not make it a habit to do what? Sin. Whosoever abides in him does not live in what? Sin. You cannot be abiding in him and in sin at the same what? time. Just as when you turn your faucet in your home, you can't expect clean and dirty water to come at the same what? time. It is either it is dirty or it is what? Clean. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known what? Him. Let me read that again. And then I'll take your mind to the book of John, what God said, the Lord Jesus Christ said. Is that whosoever abides in him sins what? Not. Whosoever sins has not what? Seen him. Neither know him. So if today you are calling yourself a Christian and you are living in sin and still sinning, what he's saying is that you have not seen him and you have never known him. So stop lying. Stop living in deception because you are hurting your soul. Come out. You know how the Gay, the homosexual, they have come out. <laughs> they have come out. Why don't they come out of that sin? <laughs> come out of that lifestyle that is abominable to God. Rather yes. than taking pride in coming out of the closet mm. and declaring boldly that I am this and I like it. Thumping our nose in the face of who? God. God. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen him. Neither what? Know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. Did you hear that? Yes. Little children, I love it when God calls you and I little what? Children. Because yes, we are little children. The book of Matthew says that except we become like little children, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. God. So when he's calling you and I little children, it is his expectation that you and I will all become like what? A little child. When you tell a little child, sit here, the child will do what? Sit here. I was watching Facebook, there were three little children, two whites and one black. The black was sitting in the middle, and he was eating ice cream. <laughs> I think it's a she. Is it he or she? Doesn't matter. A girl, eh? A girl. And she was eating ice cream. The, the white bo little boy sitting over there wanted some. So the girl would come and pretend as if he's going to give to the boy. When he brings his mouth out and then he it away. Bring his mouth, <laughs> bring his mouth, yank it away. I look at that, I was just admiring it. Why? Because I look at little children. That's how God wants us to be like. Mm -hmm. And then one time he made a mistake and she said, She has sympathy on him and let him suck a little bit. But when he was sucking, it's like he was getting too much, so she jumped it He won't, the Lord wants you to become like little one. Children. Little children. We are not, we still want to be grown up in the presence of God. God says, become what? Little children. Have you heard somebody say, but who is he to tell me? He does, do you know how old I am? I am 42 years old and he cannot tell me what to do. I am 40 something, something. There are so many of us who say that. Even now, when pastor tells us, do this and do that. We say, who is it to tell me? But you forget that it is, I am speaking in the behalf of who? God. Oh, I am 50 years old. I am 22 years old. Oh, is that right? Okay. Good. But God says, let's become like what? Let the children. 
So he's calling us, little children, let no man deceive you. Don't let even Pastor Pimpon do what? Let no man deceive you. Let not Pastor Pimpon deceive you. Let not the Pope de deceive you. It's misleading the whole world. So many are being led astray by this man, telling people that we owe an apology to the homosexuals. What kind of apology do we owe to them? Maybe the Catholic Church owes them apology because most of their cardinals and their bishops are the ones who have been sleeping with the young young boys in their district. They owe them apology, not you and I. They've turned so many young boys into homosexuals, and then now he's saying that we, we the Christian, he should say the Catholic Church, and he should begin from himself. And he has to make it clear and say that this is the reason why I'm saying this. We have made, we are the ones responsible for them becoming yes. what they are. Yes. So we have a flock, so many people flocking and following these people and then bowing their knees and kissing floors yeah. and say, thinking that they are serving God. Yeah. <sighs> little children, let no man deceive you. Don't let Pastor Pimpon deceive you. Let, don't let the bishop, the pope deceive you. Don't let the apostle deceive you. Let, don't let anybody deceive you. So many of us have been deceived. Bishops and pastors stand before the public and tell you, go and empty your bank account and bring it to them and God will bless them. Why don't they themselves go and empty their bank account and give it to you so that God will bless them? If they believe it that much. <laughs> that is, if they believe it that much and they have that much faith, why don't they go and empty their bank accounts? Take their private jet planes and all those cars and houses and give it to you. Because they have faith to trust that God will do what? Bless them. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is what? Righteous. Even as he is what? Righteous. He that doeth righteousness is what? Righteous, even as Jesus Christ is righteous. He that commits sin, ah, this is a powerful one. He that commits sin, now you see the word committed is a present continuous tense. He that makes it a habit of what? Sin. He that commits sin is of the devil. So, beloved, let us check ourselves. Let's make sure that we are not making it a habit of sinning. Because then you have already chosen who you belong to. Because the word of God is saying that he who commits sin is of the devil. I didn't say that. And let none of the media folks or those who call, are quick to call pastors who preach the truth haters. Let none of them begin to say that because then you make God a hater. But God is not full of hatred. God is the God of love, but he's also a God of justice. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So you remember the law that God manifested to you has bestowed upon you? That was for the purpose. Jesus Christ came so he would destroy the works of the devil. To set you and I free from the grips of Satan. But if you choose to willfully go and put yourself under his yoke again, then it is your decision. You choose it. I've been hearing five ministers, five. They are PhDs, doctors, and they, uh, whatever. But they come and they tell you and I, there is something called eternal security. Once saved, always saved. These are PhDs. They've gone to top theological seminaries. And they are the ones, people think that they are the, 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 the ones who know God's word. And they don't believe that you, as a, once you are born again, you can backslide and go into the eternal damnation. I don't know where, which kind of Bible and how they translate the word of God. 
They say once saved, always saved. But God's word is saved. If, if, if there is something called once saved, always saved, and eternal security, we don't need this Bible. Amen. We don't need all those words of exhortation. We don't need it. Because you've already been born again. Why do I have to be exhorting you? Why do I need to preach to you and tell you? I don't. You have already been born again. You will not fall. And if there is something called eternal, that, uh, once, eternal security, Satan will not be roaring like a lion seeking whom he will devour. You see how our PhDs and DTVs and DTDs and all those things are things that sometimes you're not careful, it will lead us into hell. <laughs> Little children, let no man deceive you. Now don't get me wrong, all my young, beautiful, handsome boys and girls, I want you all to go out all the way and get your PhDs. Get your PhDs and come and teach the truth. Amen. Hello? Amen. Get your PhDs and come and teach what? The truth. the truth. God is looking for young men and young women who will teach the truth. Amen. That's right. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Has he destroyed those works in your life and in my life? Hello? Amen. Because that's the work that Jesus Christ came to do. To shatter the kingdom of darkness. To destroy his strongholds over your life and over my life. To set us free. But you see, one thing about Satan, that man is very crafty. Satan is very what? Crafty. That is why it is important and it is incumbent on you and I to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To have our eyes, the scales on our eyes removed. So we can discern. Not too many of us have discerning spirit. So we can discern between the right and what? And the wrong. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. If you've been born again, you don't commit what? Sin. Oh, God is the God of a second chance. God understands. Who tells you that God understands? God understands that I'm weak. Yeah, he knows that you are weak. That is why Jesus Christ came to die. So you don't walk in your weakness. That Christ will enable you to overcome sin. But don't make it a habit of sinning and blaming it on yeah. God. Yeah. He said, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of what? God. Everyone that is born of God cannot sin. That is, you don't make it a habit of what? Sinning. Um, but it reminds, I'm speaking to you. You don't commit what? Fornication. You don't commit adultery. Hey. You know, in the Old Testament, they say if they catch you with a woman, they'll stone you to death. One would think that when Jesus Christ came, you would just make it a little easier. But when Jesus Christ came, he said, uh uh. He said, You've heard. That when you are caught with that you're not committed to God, when you are caught, they will stone you to death. But now I am telling you that if you look at a woman yeah. lustfully, you have already committed what? Adultery. Sin. So you see, the standard of holiness is high. Hello? For those of us who spend endless hours behind the pornographic machine. The internet, watching all these nude women and all those things. So he says, if you look at the woman lustfully, you have already committed what? Sin, adultery. Those who go to that place, how do you call that place? Where? Strip. Those who go to the strip bar. 
Is this strip what? Strip. I want to know. Strip club. Strip club. They said there is a pinhole, and some go to look. Looking through what? The pin. So you become stimulated. Is that right? You've already committed what? Sin. That's what Jesus Christ is saying. So you see the standard of holiness. And so when you have those people going around preaching cheap grace, you know what grace means? Grace that has been grace is very expensive to begin. Grace cost Jesus cost God a lot of money. Grace. Grace cost God his only begotten son. It's very expensive. It's not cheap. Oh, God's unmerited favor. Oh, God's unmerited favor. Huh. Yes, unmerited favor. But it cost God his only son. That is why the judgment day is going to be very, very fierce. Grace is that power of God that he gives to you and I to be able to resist sin, to overcome sin, to overcome sin, and to be able to worship him, and to be able to do the things that he wants you and I to do. That is grace. That is grace. It is not cheap. Grace is the power of God that enables you and I to do the perfect will of God. That is grace. So when he says that, don't receive the grace of God just in vain. He knows what he's, that's what he's talking about. Don't receive the grace of God what? in vain. Because when every one of us who say we know him came to re receive us as Lord and personal Savior, he knew that you and I in our own strength could do nothing. So he gave us grace to enable us I will conclude here. Next week, we'll continue and finish the rest. I'll finish on verse 10. So, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of what? God. The seed of God is in you. Grace is what? In you. And so you cannot what? Sin. Some scurrials have been coming to disturb my pair this is in the house. And we've been looking for ways to get hold of these squirrels. I bought catapults. I am okay. I've, I've lost all that, you know, the prowess that I had when I was a child. So sh that squirrel will be here. I shoot the catapult there. Oh, they will be going there. And then the screen will be clapping their hands and be laughing. And then they go. They take the pen. So finally, I found a trap. It's a cage. And I was able to arrest them. I call them, they are, they are pear tree terrorists. Those, they are terrorists. I mean, they terrorize you. So I caught one. We caught one about four days ago. And when we caught that one, that was on Friday. I said, well, when I go home, I'm going to look at this thing. I don't know. Test. When, is, when is it? Right. The Bible said. But when I went, I didn't go to look at it, thinking it would be there the next day. <laughs> when I went the next day, this girl has turned, been able to turn the trap upside down and the door opened and it, it, it broke and left. Broke jail. <laughs> 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 So Friday came, we bought, we put another, uh, uh, we set the trap again. And this time we caught two. So when I went there, I said, aha. Now I know what your trick is. So I put heavy stones over on the face so you cannot sleep. Waiting, I said, I'm going to kill this thing. I was say with my mouth, <laughs> but my children know my heart. In my heart, I was feeling some pain in my heart. <laughs> even for the, <laughs> even for the, for the scurry. The lady told me that when Kujo comes, I know Kujo is going to talk to you and the thing will go out. <laughs> so here Kujo comes. <laughs> so are you giving it food in the prison? <laughs> 
you can give me some water. <laughs> I was going to make that squirrel just going to go on fasting, three days fasting. <laughs> but there is one thing, it says, even with the spirit of grace in your heart, you have sympathy even for your pet, the animal. So we all put our heads together and we decided. I said, I, will, I want to release this squirrel. But which better place to release this squirrel than around the church? Because at least you come to church. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday we brought the two Mercy. and released them with a purse. I've not seen them yet in church. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whosoever is born of God does not what? Commit what? Sin. Yeah. It is even hard for you to even kill an animal. Let alone a human being. Yeah. Hello? Right. Let alone a human being. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Hello. In this, the children of God are manifest. In this, the children of God were what? Manifest. Verse 10. We'll conclude with that. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness, or whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loves not his what? Brother. Those of you who are living in enmity, and you don't talk to your brother or your sister, begin to make amends. Because that's what God's word is saying. If you don't love your brother and love your what? Your sister. It will interest you to know that even in the house of God today, in the houses of God today, there are people who go to church and they are sitting in the church on the same pew and they are not talking to each other. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that if you are that kind of person, you are not a child of God. Of God. Hello? You are not what? You see, God's word, I love it, is so blunt. God's word is so what? Blunt. You don't need a PhD to come to try to sugarcoat it a little bit to make it swallowable for you. It's so clear, straight to the point. If you are not, you can either be not or what? You are. You know, there are saints and there are aids. Either you are a saint or you are an aid. You aid. Hallelujah. <laughs> So, in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loves not his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love what? We should love what? We should love what? We should love what? One another! Amen. We should love what? <laughs> Don't take your food and go and be hiding when you see your brother coming, thinking that when he comes, you eat all of it. Just share a little bit. You know how we used to do when we were children? Some of us have grown up with it. You see the person coming, you have your bread, you run and go and put it somewhere. And then, hey, 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 your friends are all grace and you. God bless you. And the person starts talking, and you are looking at your this person is delayed you. <laughs> Wait, you are just waiting for the person to leave you alone and go. And as soon as you <laughs> love your heart, neighbor, ask your heart. <laughs> love your neighbor. He said we should love one another. I will stop here and we shall continue next week. Hallelujah. Amen. Come back next week, bring many people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because this is God's truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is God's truth. This is God's truth. And we need that in these last days. We need that. Oh, to be like the... Can you put it up for us? Black side reading. My book. Can we all rise to our feet?